Today we're looking at lesson 4.04, .04, greater than. Today's objective is I can correctly solve an inequality in one variable in two out of two problems. So we're going to talk about properties that we can use to solve inequalities. We talked about properties of equalities, properties for solving a few lessons ago. Today we're going to talk about what properties we can use for inequalities, how they might be different. So let's do a brief, very brief review of everything we've learned about inequalities since about second grade. Just to make sure we're all on the same page about inequalities. An inequality is a relationship where two things are not the same. So this cat is not the same as this dog. This pineapple is not the same as this watermelon. And four and seven are not the same either. And we use a symbol that looks like an equal sign. We draw a slash through it that says not equal. So we have that four doesn't equal seven. And we like to put these on number lines. This can be really descriptive for us to see things on number lines because we know that bigger numbers are over on the right side and smaller numbers are over on the left side. So if two numbers aren't equal, one of them has to be on the right side of the other one. So this is four and this one is seven. We know that seven has to be bigger because it's on the right side. Any two numbers that are not equal one of them must be bigger. And we have symbols to indicate which number is bigger. They're called less than and greater than symbols. And we have our little rhyme over here. Mr. Alligator is hungry for lunch. Find the biggest number and munch, munch, munch. So you can see down here we have four and seven and we have our little alligator. You might like think about drawing little eyes on him and he has, you know, teeth. Alligator is really greedy. He's always going to eat the bigger number. So you can see seven is bigger than four. That's how inequality symbols work, the less than and greater than signs. Now, if we want to talk about everything, all the numbers that are less than seven, for instance, we can use a variable. This variable represents any number that is less than, you can see this is the smaller side, Seven is going to be the bigger side. Any number that is less than seven. We graph this with an open dot at seven, and then we draw a line to the left. Everything that's less than seven, including that arrow, because it continues going on everything to the left. Now, we have an open symbol here, an open dot, because we don't include the seven. That's because if we did include the seven, we'd have a little equal, little half equal sign like this under it. That tells us to include the endpoint. When we don't have a little equal sign, we don't include the endpoints. We get an open dot. And this just covers that same idea again. Open circle does not include the endpoint. Closed circle does include the endpoint with that equal sign under it. Now, inequalities can be more complicated. They can look like equations, like this would be 2x plus 1 is greater than 5x. But the idea is the same. There's basically a number hiding in here and a number hiding in here, and it's saying that this number is bigger than this number. And so if we can set these up like equalities, you might think, well, we should be able to solve them like equalities. And in fact, we can. The only tricky thing is that not all the properties work the same. And we need to know which ones work differently so we can apply them in the appropriate place. So today we are going to investigate properties of inequalities. We're going to figure out which ones behave the same, which ones behave differently. And just a reminder, this is what our properties of equality were before. We're talking about these Oops, we're talking about these top four here, these four. These are all our properties of equality. Remember they said we can add the same thing to both sides, we can subtract the same thing from both sides, we can multiply by the same, we can divide by the same. All of those things are valid things to do with equalities. But the question is, are they valid things to do 
with inequalities. Well, first we're gonna look at one more property of equality just to maybe make it a little bit clearer. Now this property of equality is pretty trivial. It's, it's so trivial that we didn't even worry about bringing it up before. But it's called the symmetric property of equality. It says if A equals B, then B equals A, right? Big ideas here. We can swap both sides of the equal sign and it still holds true. So if we said something like A equals 4, this tells us that 4 also equals A. Or if X equals 7, then 7 also equals X. Or we could even get more trivial and say 3 equals 3, which also tells us that 3 equals 3, because we swapped sides here. So this is called the symmetric property of equality. We can swap sides at any time. But what we're looking at today is whether these properties work the same for inequality. So let's look. Let's try this property on inequalities now. Let's see if it works. Well, let's swap these two sides. We get negative 5 greater than 16. Is that true? If we think about a number line, we know that zero is here. Negative numbers will always be smaller than positive numbers. So, but this says the negative is greater than the positive. So that couldn't possibly be true. No, that, that one didn't work. Let's see if this next one works. Can we swap these sides, negative 4 and 0? Zero? 0, keep the same sign, negative 4. Is that true? Is 0 less than negative 4? Well, once again, this 0 is going to be above any negative number, so 0 would be greater, but this says 0 is less. So no, this one can't be true either. That doesn't work. Let's try one more. Let's see, 6 and 10. Can we swap those sides? 10 less than or equal to 6. Does that work? Well, no. <laughs> 6 is definitely smaller than 10, so that doesn't work either. So no, none of those worked. In order to make this work, we'd actually have to flip these signs, right? We'd have to make this one go this way. We'd have to make this one go this way. And this one go that way. And in fact, that becomes the inequality rule, the corresponding inequality property, which is called the reversal property of inequalities. If you swap the sides, you have to flip the sign. Now this is called a reversal because they're talking about reversing the sign. I say flip because it's one syllable and that's easier to say than two syllables. But you can call it either thing, they mean the same thing. Reverse the sign or flip the sign. If we swap sides, we have to flip the sign. Now you can imagine why that wouldn't be the case for equalities because if you flip the sign, it's still the same sign, right? Because equalities don't have a direction. So this one had to change a little bit when we applied it to inequalities. And in general, when a property of equality doesn't work for inequalities, we're going to need to flip the sign. Now there are exceptions to that, and we'll, we'll kind of look at a couple of them, but generally that's going to be the case. If, if we're trying to apply a property of equality, we may need to flip the sign to get it to work. So today, we're going to investigate inequalities. We're going to ask which one is bigger. They're going to give us two expressions, and we need to determine which one is greater than the other one. We've got a warning here. It's sometimes it's not super straightforward. So be aware of trickiness. Here's our warm-up round. Given that 2 is less than 5, which we believe, right, 2 is indeed less than 5, if we add 3 to both sides, which side is bigger? Well, let's see, we should be able to just resolve this. 2 plus 3 is 5. 5 plus 3 is 8. 
so 8 is bigger. Notice the sign did not change. When we added 3 to both sides, it did not make the sign change. We didn't need to flip the sign. So there's our warm-up round. Now these are going to get a little bit more challenging now. So given that n is an integer, oh, we're going to have to think back to what that means. Given that n is an integer, which is bigger, n or negative? Let's see, integers were, we had like 0, 1, 2, 3, whole numbers like that. But then they also included negative numbers, negative 2, negative 3, and so on backwards. So pause the video and see if you try some of these numbers, which one is going to be bigger? Which side is going to be bigger, n or negative n? Then unpause the video, come back, see if we get the same answer. Let's just try, let's just try a number here. Let's try three. So I'm going to plug in three, and I'm going to plug in three over here, and I get three versus negative three. Well, that's a uh, positive is always bigger than a negative, so it's going to go that direction. Alligator eats the bigger side. How about like a bigger number? Maybe let's try 35. Put in 35 for n. We have negative 35 over here. Well, once again, a positive is always bigger than a negative, so it goes that direction. Okay. Hmm, well, maybe let's try a negative number. Let's see what happens if we put a negative number in there. Maybe negative 4 in for n. And then we have negative. We're going to put negative 4 inside the parentheses. Right, so we have this negative and then negative 4 in here. Well, a negative of a negative is going to be a positive. Now we have positive 4 on the right side and negative 4 on the left side. Oh, well, a positive is always bigger than a negative, so that means the sign flipped. Huh, interesting. Hmm, well, what about 0? Zero is kind of a special case. It looks like we have a pattern going for positives, maybe possibly for negatives as well. What about zero? Zero doesn't count as a positive or a negative. Let's see, zero in for n, and then negative zero. Well, negative zero is just zero, right? So which one is bigger there, zero or zero? Well, that's a silly question. Of course, they're equal. Zero equals zero. So this rule as we look at this, actually changes depend on, depending on what number we're looking at. If we were to look at these answers as a number line, we could graph 0 here. We say these are positive numbers, these are negative numbers. And when we have positive numbers, we have a greater than symbol that points to the right. For positive numbers, it goes that way. For negative numbers, it looks like it goes this way. And for 0, it's equal. So this might not be a way you've seen math problem, answers to math problems written very often, but we could write it as a number line. Positive numbers, it's greater. For negative numbers, it's less. And for zero, it's equal. See? Yeah, started off and it's already tricky. Let's look at another one. Oh, well, let's look at some investigation tips first. So we tried a positive number, a negative number, a zero, maybe a small number and a big number. These are all good ideas to try, not just, in gen not just in these problems, but in general, when you're guessing and checking, which is essentially what we're doing, right? When you're guessing and checking, which is a totally valid way to approach problems, you might want to try these different kinds of values. Try a positive number, try a negative number, see if the conclusions you're coming to hold for all these different types of numbers. So let's see, let's try another one. Given that 10 is greater than or equal to negative 1, which is true, which is bigger, 10 plus a or negative 1 plus a? So we've added a to both sides. Pause the video, see if you can come up with a pattern of when we need to flip this sign. Come back and see if we get the same answer. So just like we just suggested, I'm going to try several different values of a. I'm going to try a positive number first, maybe 
3. So 10 plus 3 over here and negative 1 plus 3 over here. Let's see, I get 13 on this side and I get 2 on this side. Which one of those is bigger? Well, 13 is greater than 2. That's a bigger number and we know that. So looks like the sign stays the same direction. How about a negative number? Let's try a negative. Maybe negative 2. 10 plus negative 2 is going to be 8. Negative 1 plus negative 2 will be negative 3. Let's see, 8 is still bigger than negative 3, so looks like that one holds. Hmm, maybe let's try 0. We said 0 is a good one to try. 10 plus 0 equals 10. Negative 1 plus 0 is going to be negative 1. A positive is always greater than a negative, so alligator eats the big side. Huh, looks like we haven't flipped it yet. Do you suppose there's any way we could get this to flip? Let's try a big number. Let's try like a thousand. Ten plus a thousand. We get one thousand ten. And then negative one plus a thousand will be nine hundred ninety nine. Which one of those is bigger? Oh, let's see. One thousand ten is still bigger. It didn't flip the sign. Maybe we could even try a small number. Ten plus zero point one. It's going to be ten point one. Over here we have negative one plus. 0 0.1. That's going to be negative 0 0.9. Well, positive is always bigger than a negative, so we didn't flip the sign. Looks like we never flipped the sign for this one. If we were to put this on a number line again, we have 0 here, we have our positive numbers, we have negative, them, negative numbers. No matter what number we put in, we get the same thing out. And this, you'll notice we added A. We said we're going to add the same number to both sides. That sounds like our addition property of equality, right? Except now it's going to be our addition property of inequality. But it looks like it works exactly the same. For any number we add, we don't flip the sign. We keep the sign the same direction. No matter what we add to both sides, we do not flip the sign. Now you may have seen this rule before, but this sort of helps us discover that it is truly the case. We can demonstrate that is actually the case rather than just, you know, memorizing it and believing it. We can try these options and remind ourselves, oh yeah, when we add the same thing to both sides, it doesn't flip. We can show that. So let's look at another one. Given that 3 is less than 7, which is bigger, 3 minus a or 7 minus a? Hmm. Pause the video. Come back, see if we get the same answer. Let's try some different numbers. Maybe let's try 5 for a. So 3 minus 5 and 7 minus 5. 3 minus 5 is negative 2. 7 minus 5 is positive 2. Positive is always greater than a negative. Well, let's try a negative number. How about negative 4? 3 minus negative 4. That's going to be add a positive. We get 7. 7 minus negative 4. Once again, add a positive. We're going to get 11. 11 is still bigger than 7. We could try 0. 3 minus 0 is 3. 7 minus 0 is 7. Yep, it stays the same. Try a big number, maybe 100. 3 minus 100 is negative 97. 7 minus 100 is negative 93. Now, when we have two negative numbers, it can be hard to think sometimes, which one of those is bigger? So I like to put them on a number line to help me figure that out. And I'm like, oh, well, negatives, it goes more negative here. So that's negative 97 would be over here. And then negative 93 
would be to the right. So the negative 93 is going to be bigger. It's more to the right. So let's see, alligator eats the big one. Huh. So it looks like we did a positive, a negative, a zero, a big number. No matter what we did here, it stayed the same direction. So once again, put that on a number line, our solutions. No matter what number we put in, positive, negative, one, or positive, negative, zero, rather, we get the same answer. It goes the same direction no matter what. And so this is going to be our subtraction property of equality, of inequality, rather. Notice we're subtracting the same number from both sides. That's what we talked about, the subtraction property being. So the subtraction property, exactly like the addition property, says we don't flip the sign ever. Okay, so let's look at another example. Given that 5 is greater than 4, which one is bigger, 5 times x or 4 times x? We're going to multiply by the same thing on both sides. So let's go through our options. We'll choose a positive number, maybe 6. 5 times 6 will be 30. 4 times 6 will be 24. 30 is definitely bigger than 24, so it goes that direction. Uh, let's try a negative. Negative 2. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Well, now we're comparing negatives again, so let me just write my number line really quick. Negative 10 and then negative 8 as we're going up, so negative 8 is going to be bigger. Oh, so alligator eats the bigger one. Looks like that flipped the sign. Huh. Maybe I want to try another negative just to make sure that is true still. Let's try a negative 5. 5 times negative 5 will be negative 25. 4 times negative 5 will be negative 20. Hmm. Here's my number line. I know that negative 25 will go bigger, get to negative 20, eventually get to 0. So negative 20 is my bigger number here. Alligator eats the bigger one. Yeah, it looks like it. Hold, it looks like the, uh, the negative number made us flip the sign. Hmm. What about zero? We're supposed to try zero as well, right? Five times zero. Well, that equals zero. Four times zero equals zero as well. Oh, so which one is bigger now? They're both zero, so neither is bigger. They're the exact same. Zero equals zero. So if we were to graph our solutions on a number line here, we have zero positive numbers, negative numbers. We say for positive numbers, looks like it's a greater than, pointing to the right. For negative numbers, it flips and points to the left. And for zero, it's equal. And this becomes our multiplication property of equality, or inequality again, sorry. Five times the same number, four times the same number. So we're multiplying by the same number on each side for our multiplication property of inequality. We say that if we put in a positive number, we don't flip the sign. If we put in a negative number, we do flip the sign. And if we put in zero, it actually becomes equal instead of an inequality. We eliminate the inequality entirely if we put in zero. Interesting. All right, let's do one more. Given that 2 is less than or equal to 8, which is true, 2 is indeed on the left side of 8 on the number line, which is bigger, 2 over x or 8 over x? Hmm. Well, let's try a positive number, maybe just 1. One's a valid positive number, right? So let's do 2 over 1, that equals 2, and 8 over 1, which equals 8. 
Well, eight's bigger than two, so alligator eats the big one. We've got an equal sign we're carrying on this one. So it looks like that stayed the same. Uh, let's try a negative number, maybe negative two. Two over negative two is going to equal negative one. And then eight over negative two, that's going to equal eight divided by two is four. Positive divided by a negative is a negative. So negative one compared to negative four. Hmm, which one of those is bigger? Hmm, negative four over here, negative one here. It looks like negative one is the bigger one. Alligator eats the bigger one. Oh, looks like that flipped sides. We had to flip that one. Hmm. Okay, uh, maybe let's try zero. Two over zero. What is, what is two over zero? Well, we have that, uh, that problem in math, right? Divide by zero is, a, is an error. That is undefined. We can't divide by zero. So this actually doesn't compute. Eight divided by zero also doesn't, we can't do that. Zero is not a number we can try here. So basically we can only summarize over positive and negative numbers. The zero number doesn't work. Let's look at our solutions here on the number line. Our positive numbers were less than or equal to. Our negative numbers were greater than or equal to. And our zero value is not included. We don't have a zero value. And that makes sense because we can't divide by zero. This is our division property of inequality. It says if you divide by a positive number, you don't flip the sign, right? It stayed the same direction. If you divide by a negative number, you do flip the sign. And zero is not an option. All right, so let's look at one final one. This one's a little bit more challenging. Take a look at this one. See if you can pause the video, figure it out. Which one is bigger? If y is less than x, which is bigger, x minus y or y minus x? So you could think of different numbers to try here. You're going to have to choose two different numbers. I always like to put 0 in as one because I think 0 is an easy number to work with. So let's see, 0 is less than 3, for instance. This is my y value, this is my x value, so I'm just setting it up like this. 0 is less than 3. So x is 3, y is 0, x minus y will be 3. y minus x is going to be 0 minus 3. So 0 minus 3 on this side, we get negative 3. Positive is always bigger than a negative, so alligator eats the big one. Let's see, maybe we can set up another one with zero. I think uh, if I want to put zero on this side, I'll have to use a negative number, so maybe let's do negative one. Negative one is in fact less than zero. So let's see, our x value is zero minus our y value, which is negative one. I'm subtracting a negative, that becomes add a positive, and we get positive one y minus x now, this is negative 1 minus, our x value is 0, negative 1 minus 0 is negative 1. Well, a positive is still greater than a negative, so alligator eats the big one. Looks like it didn't flip. You know another pattern I'm noticing here, this is kind of interesting, this is 3 and negative 3, 1 and negative 1. Do you think that pattern holds? Maybe let's just try two other kind of random numbers. Let's say like 9 is less than 20, right? That's true. 9 is less than 20. So x minus y, that's going to be 20 minus 9, equals 11. 
And then y minus x, so that's going to be 9 minus 20. 9 minus 20, that is negative 11. Positive is always greater than a negative. So yeah, stays the same, and that pattern is holding. We get the positive number on the left and the negative number on the right. So given that y is less than x, these two relations, x minus y and y minus x, this one will always be greater. x minus y will always be greater. We weren't able to make it flip, and in fact, we always got the positive on the left side. So if this is interesting to you, um, this is not a required bit, but you can even look at this inequality right here and say, if this is logically true, do these statements make sense? What is x minus y going to look like if x is bigger than y? What is y minus x going to look like if y is less than x? How does, sub how does subtraction work with bigger and smaller numbers? Just something to think about, something extra. And that wraps up our lesson for today. We're back to the objective. I can correctly solve an inequality in one variable in two out of two problems. So we're going to use those properties that we figured out today to be able to solve an inequality. We'll be working on that in the math lab tomorrow.